Okie dokie. You haven't seen this movie? Just stop watching and go buy a ticket. Try and go in as blind as possible. That's what I try to do as well. I did have some vague expectations based on some reviews, but this was far from what I was expecting. Don't go any further if you have any sort of interest in this movie. I'll try and make this spoiler free, but honestly, you don't want to watch this if you haven't seen it already. We're introduced to an expecting mother, anxious due to her past miscarriages, along with a bad case of an abusive partner. Ready to start a dysfunctional family together, their life is interrupted by a cloaked figure that murders her husband and causes another miscarriage. Traumatized, but also somewhat relieved over her newfound freedom, she tries to start over, but is soon plagued by visions of her attacker's new victims. Now, I need to talk about the acting and the writing for this movie. I really wasn't sure what I was expecting, I didn't want to know too much or I would spoil the surprise. But I was definitely not expecting this movie to be so... extra. All our characters talk in such a funny, expository way, and have over-exaggerated reactions. And whenever anything spooky happens, the soundtrack just starts blaring to make sure we realise that this is a shocking scene. I was confused as hell at the start. It's so surreal because I thought this was a fake movie inside a movie that just kept playing. But I have to respect how stylistic and campy this is. You can tell that everything is purposely over the top, and you realise it's playing up old horror cliches, like the light plug scene that makes fun of horror movie characters that can't use a key to save their life. I laughed so many times during this movie, especially when me and my friends were able to predict parts of the movie. I do think I miss some of the throwbacks this movie has, probably because I am considerably a newer horror fan. I haven't seen any of the classics. Cheese, however, is universal, and I loved it once I figured out what was going on. Funny enough, before watching this movie, I did get a brief description from one of Super Eyepatch Wolf's videos, making a comparison to The Matrix for Malignant. As soon as I started watching this, I was starting to wonder if the soap opera dialogue was a hint that this world was not real and our main character is living in a simulation. I was wrong, of course. Probably shouldn't have leaned more into my initial thought of what's the first word that pops into my head when I think of Malignant? The actual reason for the major comparison was probably more the uh, room transition scenes and the action. The visuals and camera work are really amazing. The way the room melts and rebuilds itself whenever a vision is starting. And other shots like an isometric view of Madison, our main character, running through her house. And the zoom out of the fire escape portion of the chase scene. It really adds to the overall feel and confusion because the acting is so hilariously bad, yet the movie looks so good. Our new horror movie killer, Gabriel, is such a memorable character as well. Even before I'd started to piece together everything, I was admiring how flamboyant he was during his scenes. The way he pulls back dramatically every time he stabs someone, and watching him workshop the trophy into his signature weapon just, just so weirdly adorable in a messed up way. I didn't realise the reason for the weird and awkward movie until the reveal, but it really adds to how unique he feels with the chase scene, the massacre scene, really showing off how ridiculously he moves. He has such a horror movie power set as well, it doesn't make sense that he can control electricity and technology, has superhuman strength and moves like a parkour professional, but you don't care because you just watch him punch a hole through someone and cry out, Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. He's basically the expert assassin from modern horror movies turned evil, and I love it. I love all the clues that allude to Gabriel's true nature as well. It really isn't hiding it that much. In fact, I think they're purposely sprinkling in so many details that I probably missed quite a few of them because I was cackling my head off during the most of the movie. You can pretty easily create a close enough theory to what the shocking twist is way before it happens. It's actually kind of impressive how some of the obvious foreshadowing just feels so naturally blended in with the silliness of this entire experience. It's really interesting seeing a movie like this from the director of The Conjuring Cinematic Universe and Saw. I thought The Devil Made Me Do It was incredibly boring with cheesiness that didn't blend in with the serious tone it had. And Spiral was actually an alright watch that didn't really make me greatly like or dislike it. But Belignant felt like such a fun movie, filled with an odd sense of love for horror as a genre. James Wan is such a mixed bag for me, I'm so glad I didn't look into this movie because I may have skipped it out of uncertainty if I knew he was the one behind it. Of course, not everyone's gonna like this movie. 
I definitely understand the criticism of some people being whiplashed by the tonal shifts, from the doctor calling a patient a bad little boy, to a husband asking his wife how many times he has to watch his kids die inside her. I think my head just works in a weird way that I'm able to interpret these mismatch of themes to be just more purposely mind-melting ridiculousness. I also love that I can nitpick the shit out of this. It really adds to how goofy it is when things just don't make sense. The people that don't understand how this movie is supposed to be campy does make me feel a bit sorry for them. They just weren't able to have the same amount of fun that I had watching this. Also, is this a horror movie? I guess better question, did I get scared? I think strictly categorizing genres stifles creativity, but I do admit this feels like an action movie with horror movie elements. Did I get scared? Not really. Was I entertained? Absolutely. I know they very obviously teased a sequel during the climax, but unless they didn't give me the same feeling now that I have prior knowledge of what I'm getting into, I wonder if I would still enjoy a continuation or not. I'd probably just rewatch the first one. I honest to god love Malignant. It's probably too late if you are at this point and still haven't seen it, but go watch it anyway, it's a good time with the mates. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video or want to see more from me, leave a comment below, do all the usual YouTube things, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.